Hey y'all, what's up? It's Alana and this is my review for season four, episode seven of Ready to Love. I'm still a little bit under the weather, so excuse me in advance if I have to clear my throat. And this episode should have been titled WTF because that's exactly how I felt towards the end. So let's get into it. We meet at the gentleman's lounge. The men are realizing that it's getting serious. There's only six of them left. So Tommy comes in. He says he wants them to introduce their top lady or ladies to their closest friends to get some feedback on the women. So KG is dealing with some PTSD about this experience because this is what led him to go home last season when he made some type of comment about finances. Joel and Jason agree that this is going to be hard. So we get over to Joel's home and I'm doing the dates one by one. Joel got this pole representation of a, a crab boy. I mean, Joel, you be doing all the most with the New Orleans stuff. What was the, the corn and the, the potatoes and all that stuff? And then y'all, you got four little dry crabs in a saucepan. I don't know, maybe y'all had to transfer it from outside to inside. So I'm going to give you a pass since y'all on TV. Anyway, he has his friends who are like his siblings, Precise, Bongo, and Shay. They're meeting Vernicia, of course, and I have to, to remind myself her name is Vernicia. And she said, it's a big deal when you meet somebody's friends. And yes, it is. So when she comes in, he introduces her as his stick along. I thought that was an interesting choice of words, but maybe he just didn't mean anything by it. But yeah, it just it caught me off guard that he said that. Now, Shay gets right into it, and Joelle stands there and ear hustles the entire time. Go sit down, Joelle. You wasn't doing nothing but playing with that same drink over and over again. So Shay asks Vernicia, what, um, what does she think about Joelle? She says, oh, that's my boo. <laughs> and I was like, that's it? Because it's like them, them two get on my nerves with that because they always just give these little generic answers like he talks about her going through stuff and being a mama and she's saying that's her boo but i understand she probably was shy intimidated you know it's it's real um anxiety provoking to meet friends and family for the first time now renicia you my girl you know i rock hard with you but as much body and beauty you have why did you come there looking like you was going to walmart I was so disappointed. I thought she was going to bring it, but you know, she had on these eyelashes that was just that were just way too big, too long. I, I wasn't feeling the way she was looking. Still a beautiful woman, but I just wish she would have brought, you know, the fashions and, and the hair and everything to this meeting with them. So anyway, they talk about the process of going through this whole ready to love thing. Bernicia says that she's learned a lot about herself, including she is territorial. And she states that she has her focus on one man who is Joel. They get into this conversation about how friendly Joel is. And Vernicia pipes up then. And she says, yeah, because I we had a conversation about that. I told him every time me and the ladies meet, they think Joel is feeling them because he talks to us all the same way. You know, he calls them baby and all that. So Shay says, well, I told him that when you call a woman baby, they think that you mean it. So you can't be doing that. Everybody don't understand that that's just New Orleans culture to, to talk like that. And she says that, you know, he he he's super friendly, right? And to me, that was um, a hint to you, Vernicia, that Joel is a big old flirt. So you need to pay attention. Vernicia says that she was informed about the kiss between Amber and Joel, the cheek kiss. And I'm glad that she got clarification on it. But I think because of something Joel says towards the end, that this conversation about this kiss led to an argument between them. But anyway, she said that she was hurt by because she does not like to share. However, the ladies know that her con connection with Joel is different. They got something, they got a, a real thing going on. So she ain't um, too bothered by the competition. If y'all know where I can get this necklace from, please tell me. <laughs> Sorry to divert attention from it, but I really do like that. All right, so they move it on to the living room and Shay goes at it again. Now, Shay did most of the talking. She like basically went in on Vernicia, not too hard, but she was, you know, bringing it with the questions and stuff. The men really didn't say anything. I think we just heard one of them talk. So she asked her, what does she want to, to get from this experience? Vernicia says, 
I want to be the first one to get married off this show. And Renisha, I you know, I understand that's what you want, but to some people, just meeting them from, for the first time, they probably took that as you are trying to just secure a husband that you're not worrying about getting to know him. And that's the only thing that's on your mind. Like it don't matter as long as you get married. Their reactions, and I mean Joel and the friends' reactions were very telling. Shay tells Joel, Oh, so so you ready to get married again? And then the men are just like, whoa, you know, and even Joel, he kind of leans back and said, don't, don't put a stamp on me just yet. So Shay asks Joel if he's ready to get married again, because we know that he lost his wife. He says, yeah, I'm, I'm ready. You know, is I, got, I just got to find the right, the right lady. Now pay attention to Joel and Vernicia. Usually he can't keep his hands off of her. They are smiling and hugging. They seem like, you know, how your 18 year uncle got into it before a barbecue or something like that and they show up together and they still got to play nice in front of the family so nobody won't be in their business that's how they were they were very distant with the with each other so i, I did pick up on that now venetia says that she feels like she made a good impression on the friends they were very nice to her once she leaves they talk they give their feedback shay says that there was a red flag, the whole territorial thing. I, I didn't like that. I think that she, uh, I don't know if she said the word clingy, but Joel says in his confessional that he is getting clingy vibes from Bernicia. And that was confirmation that Shay saw that too. Precise doesn't say anything, but Bongo um, steps in and he says, well, you know, maybe she she just really digging you and then she, she knows what she wants. And I agree with that. I think that I don't get clingy from her. Renisha is an Aquarius. They are anything but clingy. But, you know, we that's not an absolute. But she doesn't give me that. I think that because she has set her sights on Joel and they had this real strong connection in the beginning, and that's the only person she's been dating that is coming off as clingy, but it's just she knows who she wants. She doesn't have interest in anyone else. And she's probably getting that from him, too. She's probably thinking... That he with me all the time, like this, this is my dude. So anyway, um, Joel says that it his friends, their opinions matter, but they don't make decisions for him. We get to KG and his co-host Ayana, Ayana and Gavin, and he gives a brief int introduction to Amber. Of course, that's who he's going to bring. He says he tells them that Amber is a DA, and they are impressed with this. Amber comes in looking good. I mean, she brought the body, the face, all that. Y'all know Amber is a, a cutie pie, but she came in there and they were like, whoa, like they were happy with what they saw, both of them. <laughs> so Amber says she's happy to see KG and his element. And she just lights up whenever she talks about him. So she gets in there, they twirl her around and look her up and down. It would have been too much for me, but Amber just took it. So Gavin starts in with the questioning. He asks, Amber, how does she handle conflict? That was a good question. And, and she says, I, I deal with it head on. And she answered that correctly. And I truly believe that she is one of those people that does not play games. So she said, you know, I'll, I'll get loud with you. I may raise my voice, but I'm not going to curse you out. Then um, they asked her, what is she looking for out of this, this process? She says, I'm looking for a soulmate. Now, Amber, I didn't talk to you already about this, my girl. I think that you're saying what you think KG wants to hear because that's a word that he used before this whole soulmate thing. So, you know, you got to be true to yourself and also true to KG because you don't want to end up in a long-term relationship being unfulfilled because you don't have any any title. So anyway, uh, they asked her, I think Ayana asked her if she has told her friends and family about KG and she said, no, you know, I haven't told anybody. And they're taken back by this. They a surprise and it, it was it seems like that was a red flag for them however kg says he understands that you don't want to broadcast this type of situation saying it's a relationship because you don't know what's going to happen and i totally agree with that so gavin says that he thinks that he tells amber you know you seem really authentic you both have a good connection it seems natural um amber says that she likes kg because their connection is natural they just you know have this natural flow with them um, and she can trust what he says. And they, they also agree and reaffirm that KG is a trustworthy person. So I was like, okay, okay. 
So um, Amber gets up and it's she leaves. So we we know that this was a, a good look for her and KG. They really seem to vibe. I like these two together. At first, I was like, they need to move around. But now I think these two are a good fit for each other. Let's just hope it stays that way. So anyway, Amber gets up and she leaves. She said, even though she had that connection with Joelle, she ain't worrying about it. <laughs> KG is her number one. And she's, you know, that, that's where she's going to be. They walk out together and she said, you know, your friends are cool. They like family to me now. So next is this date with Jason and his friends, Coranda and Latrell. <clears throat> yeah. All right, we're going to talk about it. All right, so Jason says he has a strong connection with Kyra. However, Liz is growing on him, so he needs his, friend to, his friends to help him choose. Liz says she's honored to, to meet his friends. She comes there looking nice and casual. This was stupid. Like, this whole idea of them playing golf and the friends watching them. If y'all trying to get to know these women, why, why are this? You know, I guess, I don't know. Maybe it was just something to loosen them up a bit. But, you know, I just, I didn't like that. Anyway, uh, Liz calls Jason over there behind her to help her go. And you know he was liking that. He liked to be getting all his, his feels on and stuff. I ain't saying Jason the creep, but you know, y'all know how he is. So um, Kyra comes in, giving body as usual and, and face, looking good. So she comes in there and I was shocked when I saw her. I was like, oh, Lord. And then uh, Liz said straight like that. <laughs> so Liz was caught off guard too. But she she handled it. She plays it cool. And uh, Kyra also said she was surprised to see Liz there as well. And she was cool about it too. So she has her little turn playing golf and she sits down. She asked the friends questions. She started it off. She asked them how would they describe Jason. Latrell says Jason is ambitious and self-driven. Miranda agrees, and she also says he's the type of person that will fall seven times and get up eight. And I wonder, like, it seems like Jason has been through a lot in his life. I would like to hear more about his story. You know, it, I don't know. It just seems like he, he has dealt with a lot of trauma in his past. Coranda asks uh, Kyra if she is an alpha female. And I was wondering why would she ask her that? Like, is it just because she's an attorney? I think I, I didn't like that question. But uh, Kyra says, I don't know if she says no, but she says that she's been in a, a relationship before where she had to leave. And this time she just is ready for a man to wear the pants in her in her relationship. Liz kind of says the same thing, but um, she says she wants her man to be the spiritual lead in, in her household. She said, you know, Jason has a, a, a good spiritual foundation. He actually broke down the book of Daniel. <laughs> and it was like, oh, mm -hmm. you know, I know like for me, if that was like, if it was my friend, uh, my friend's girlfriend telling me something like that, I probably would have laughed because you know, you know your friends like when they doing stuff just to, to do the most and make a good impression. Not saying that Jason isn't, you know, about that, that scripture life, but it was just, it was funny that she was schooling them on, on their friend. So um, she, she was impressed by him breaking down the, the book of Daniel. And she says she wants her husband to be the, the spiritual head of the household. And she says, Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. And then Liz abruptly leaves. She has to go. But she did say it was a good meeting with the friends. So now Kyra is there alone with Jason and his, uh, and Coranda and Latrell. So uh, Latrell asks Kyra, what's her vision for the, in the next five years? She says she wants to be married. And um, yeah, she wants to be married. She doesn't want to be in a relationship without any destination. She, you know, she wants somebody to put a ring on it. Latrell says, well, if you, if you don't get that, things don't always work out the way we want them to, like, how would you handle that? And she was like, come on now. Like, within five years, you know if you want to be with somebody or not. And I totally agree. Once you get up in your 30s, if you don't know, like, within a year or two, if you want to stay with that person, leave them alone and stop wasting it, their time. Especially with women. Don't be wasting all your good eggs on no, no F-boy and no um, struggle love. So Kyra uh, says she wonders if Coranda and Jason had some type of 
dealings back in the day. And that's natural. You know, when women, when we see our significant others with female friends, that's something we all think about. Like how like how did they get because you you know, men, you know, most of the time if they spending time with you or doing something, they they attracted to you, they probably tried to get at you at one point. So I, I think that was a valid concern. Anyway, they toasted up and to a, a good meeting. Kyra said she was uh, reassured of what she thought about Jason, that he was a stand-up guy. She was happy to, to get that from the friends. So now Jason is with his friend, with uh, Coranda and Latrell, and they're giving their input. He said, y'all know, you know, I got a strong, strong connection with Kyra, but y'all see, you know, what it is with Liz, so tell me what y'all think. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, Coranda says that uh, Kyra is more down to earth, and she thinks that she's a better fit for Jason. Latrell agrees. They talk. He said, well, what y'all think about Liz? And she was like, she's beautiful, but she's stiff. <laughs> so um, she was like, I, I didn't know if we were supposed to pray. I felt the presence of the Lord on her. I was like, is we supposed to be praying or what? What's going on here? And I thought that was so funny. I was laughing. But Coranda, don't be trying to, to crack on Liz with that, that baby doll looking wig on your head, girl. That, that thing looks like one of them wigs. Like that hair on the baby dolls that my grandma used to keep in the, the china cabinet. And they used to like scare the hell out of me. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I don't know what, what they're called. Some type of collector's item. But that's what that hair looked like. Sorry, girl. I'm not just picking with you. But it, it's the truth. I'm going to tell you. So anyway, they just, she said, you know, I just like Kyra. And she she to me, for you, it's a better fit. And I agree. I think that Kyra is, um, you know, she's younger and Everybody says this, says this that when Jason and Liz are together, it gives off auntie nephew vibes. So uh, Jason said he, him and Kyra reached different levels. I don't know what that means, but he he wants Kyra now. And I said, Jason, see you you down bad for that because you messed it up between David and Liz. Now you talking about you on Kyra? I told you that was that lust spirit on you. But uh, go ahead, boy. All right, so we get to Kyra again. <laughs> um, she's looking cute again. Kyra always brings it. She has on her little workout gear. She's meeting up with AJ's friends, Danielle and, is his name Khalil? Yeah, Khalil and Danielle. So um, he AJ wants more insight on Kyra. But he, I think he already had his mind made up. But he just want, you know, he had to do it for the sake of the show. They play a nice little game of volleyball um, to break the ice, and then they finally sit down. Khalil, who reminds me so much of young Jock for some reason, um, he sits and at he tells her, you know, he really cares about AJ, and he said, "Well, tell me a little bit about yourself." And he must have printed out some interview questions because the stuff he was asking was really just random. So she said, um, "I'm an attorney. I'm 34. I don't have any children." And then he says, uh, what's the last book you read? And I was like, what? Who cares? We never get the answer. But it's just like, I think probably because of uh, advertisement or something like that. I don't care about what, like, why do you, I don't know, whatever. So then Danielle, she put, she gives it to her. She says, what do you think about female friends? And I was like, oh, that's ironic because Kyra just was wondering about Jason's female friends. So she she said, look, I just I gotta fill out the situation. And I, I get it. That was a good answer because you letting her know I'm putting you on notice. I'm gonna see what it is between y'all two. So I, I'm gonna be watching my I, my eyes open. She said that they came with the questions, but she was gonna flip it. And that was genius. She flipped it on them. She asked them, do they think that AJ is really ready to love? And they said, um, yes. Khalil said without a doubt. And Kyra, um, she she believes them. You know, she said that she thinks that um, the same thing. Like they they kind of reaffirmed what she was thinking about AJ. Now Danielle says, yeah, I think he's ready to love because he's more stable in his job and his career. So she let you know that AJ is where the money resides. Now Kyra, you ain't got to worry about that card declining no more. <laughs> so that's what she was trying to tell you, Kyra. And AJ said, I should have brought all um, the ladies I dated to, to meet y'all. And she said, 
Um, why do you need to meet all the ladies? And Kyra is real defensive when it when it comes to AJ. So I'm thinking she really feeling him. But it's sometimes she is hard to read, like how she's feeling AJ and Jason. I don't know which one she likes the most because it, it kind of varies like show to show. When Kyra leaves, they talk about um they give their opinions on her. Khalil says she has her guard up and her guards up and then y'all say well of, of course she does so they she defends her like and i appreciated them having women in a way because the women can give the female perspective on things so she said but i think she really wants to be with you and i like that so they didn't have anything negative to say and, J and aj says that kyra is now his focus next this is bs right here Ron doing the Dougie. Now, I appreciated the Dougie over that struggle salsa dancing. So he has this date with Chrysanthemum and Alexis. Out of all people to put together, I don't even like those dates when you have these two different people, but these two who do not like each other, why, Ron? <laughs> you messy. Like, that was just too much. But anyway, his friend Taniqua and his other friend Nate, they're there to uh, give their opinions, to observe and give opinions. Ron says he needs to know Who's going to be with him for the long term? And he's torn between these two. So when uh, Chrysanthemum comes in, she has on this cat suit with like these holes on the side, exposing some skin. And she sits down and is rubbing Ron's legs and asking him if, if he like it. And she like, I, I know you do. Chrysanthemum, I mean, <laughs> Chrysanthemum, Alexa said, and it was kind of matching a little bit. <laughs> she said, girl, what do you have on? I ain't no hater, but, you know, this ain't the strip club. This That's not what you wear to meet the friends for the first time. Now, Alexis, I know you said you ain't no hater, but, my dear, you coming across as one because I get it. That that wasn't an appropriate outfit to wear to if y'all were meeting, like, for dinner or for lunch or something like that. But she was dressed for the occasion. Y'all was at a club. So, I mean, you know, what you wanted her to wear, like, a pantsuit? I don't know. But anyway... She says that she doesn't want to be on no date with her. And Chrysanthemum also said it, it's awkward to, to be sitting there and Alexis is there too. They both was, were completely turned off by each other's presence. And I was too. So um, Taniqua starts to ask the question. She says, oh yeah, and then Alexis being messy, talking crap to Ron about Chrysanthemum. Not for me. If I was a dude and this, I'm dating these, both of these women and one of them always talking about the other, that would get aggravated to me. But Ryan be like, he he messy because he plays into it. Like instead of him being like, you know, stop, don't do that. It's like he, him and Alexis are like two friends, two mean girls. So I, I didn't like that. So anyway, Sonequa gets into the question. She said, how do you feel about Ryan's spur of the moment travel plans? Like he'll just get up and go. Alexis can't prepare. <laughs> you know, Alexis answered this like, she was uh, doing a, a, a press conference or something. She was like, yes, I am a woman of order. I have my son. I have somebody who is who I trust to handle my son, and I, I can do it. Yes, I am prepared. And uh, Chrysanthemum was just like, well, look, I'm a flight attendant, so uh, yeah, I can do that. I, I'm used to traveling. It ain't nothing for me. Alexis was pissed off at that, and she said, you know, I'm a flight attendant. She mocks Chrysanthemum in her confessional. And I think that it is really coming from an insecurity from Alexis because she has a child. I think that's something that bothers her when dating because, you know, she, especially dating somebody who, I don't know, does Ron have children? But I don't know, especially dating for women. It's like if you are a single mother, especially it's like you um, are looked at as damaged goods. So I don't think that she, I think that she's bothered by that. But, you know, Alexis is, give, is giving off hater. So anyway, uh, then Nate starts to talk. And Nate, you need to be quiet because you made me mad. Chrysanthemum was trying to turn up with you and you was just giving her, like, shade. That It was off-putting to me. I don't know what you're going through. Like, if Ron told you something about her before they got there and you just don't like her. But you was really being just, like, I don't know, standoffish with the girl. So, and I think that's probably why she had this attitude on just at this point, because I'm going to excuse her attitude just for this right here. All right. So um, he asked them, he asked for Santhium, do you want children? Now, before that, 
Alexis said, Chrysanthemum, real pretty, you know, but she don't talk much. She'll give you one to two word answers. And that's exactly what she did. She said, um, I'm open. <laughs> she just was like, yeah, I'm, I'm open. And she, she, uh, then he, he goes ahead and asks her, what qualities do you look for in a man? And uh, she said, well, I, I want to have fun. I like them to do what I want to do. Everything about, about her. She said, I, you know, I ain't never been the type of person that just was like, I want a baby and all that. I'm selfish. And yes, Cassandra, you are definitely selfish. But as long as you know that, we good. All right. So then Nate says, well, what about the holidays? Can you cook? And she laughs it off. And she was like, look, don't be asking me. She didn't tell him directly, but she was saying in her confession, I don't like interviews. Don't be asking me all these questions. But Cassandra, this is the, the, the game. This is the process. You signed up for this. So why are you getting mad? But I, I don't like that either. I'm telling you, I don't like being questioned. Um, you know, that every time <laughs> I've been put in a position to meet somebody's family, I can't stand it because I feel like, look, um, why are you putting me on trial here? Because, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, she was like, I'm, I'm over this. I'm done. And she even said that if she leaves, like, with an attitude, she was like, bye, two of those or something like that. I think it was a mixture of how Nate reacted to her. He was, like, really arrogant like i don't know sometimes when men see pretty women they want to treat them bad because they feel like they have this privilege and they they want them to be like oh you know i i i'm not moved by your your beauty or whatever so i think that's what it was with him because he was kind of he was like that like real dry with alexis too in a way, until, you know, she started making them laugh and stuff. So um, Chrysanthemum just ran, just like she ran with the salsa dancing and all that stuff. She's a runner. <laughs> all right. So then uh, Ron says, you know, me and Chrysanthemum just got that type of relationship. We just get each other. We don't have to talk and have all these deep conversations. You know, I, I understand her. Side note, she's a Leo. He's an Aries. They got that fire bond. So they probably do connect on just... Um, you know that 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 level. Alexis is like, good. This half a gone. All right. So he Nate asked her if she wants more children. She says that she wants more more. That's it, cause she's tired of playing around with Matonka trucks and all that. And uh, Taniko asked if she's okay with female friends. She says that I'm secure. I ain't worrying about none of that. I know I got this. So she heads on out. And before she does, she hugs Ron and says. Don't forget who your number one is. <laughs> right. I mean, Alexis, I, I think he got it. I, I think he got it. Anyway, so she, um, Tadika likes that. She was like, okay, girl. And then Alexis struts on out. She felt like she she did that. She strutted so hard that I thought that her um her back was going to break, how she was twisting, twisting that little butt out that door. But anyway, she said she in the lead, child. So uh, Taniqua and Nate give their opinions on the ladies. Taniqua says she likes Alexa. She likes her energy. She took control. Um, they both, I think it was Nate that said, you know, if you want to progress into something more, you know, pick Alexis. But if you want to have fun and be the king of the clubs, stick with Chris. So uh, Ryan says, you know, he got a lot to think about. He says that, uh, this, you know, this is hard. He said, I'm going to just self-eliminate because <laughs> it's, it's too much for him. All right, so we head on over to uh, David and his two friends. Their names are Brittany and Micah. Before Liz gets there, because we know Liz is going to be the one uh, to, to show up, he tells them that Liz is, I don't know if he gives them her age, but he says Liz has never been married and she doesn't have any children. Micah says, well, is she crazy? Mike, Micah, you go to stop. Because if every woman does not want children, every woman does not idolize marriage. So that was that was not good. And David, you just you ain't even say like, well, he did say no, clown. But it's just like, I don't know. I, I didn't like that. Anyway, um, Liz says that she's excited to, to meet them, even though her and Jason had that little fling. She can't deny her connection with David, and she wants his friends to like her. So she walks up, and I thought David was going to have a problem with her, like with her breast out, because we know how he is, and he probably wanted, I, I don't know, the type of person David is, I think he probably would wanted her, have wanted her to be covered up. 
But anyway, she walks up. He's happy to see her. Um, he introduces her to the friends. And then Brittany starts with the, the questioning. Brittany says, what do you think is necessary for operating a marriage? Liz says, great communication and um, handling each other with grace. Now, I was surprised she didn't come and say, you know, that, that spiritual thing. I was thrilled by that because that's, you know, that's Liz, her, 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 her thing, you know, it's like God and all that. But she just said communication at first, which, which was strange to me. I don't know. Maybe they edited it out. Um, Micah, he could not let this go. He said, why haven't you been married? And she said, I haven't been in many relationships. Excuse me, y'all. I haven't been in many relationships. I feel like this is my time, though. You know, I need. I want to find my life partner. So um, they looking at her a little, <laughs> a little bit crazy. I don't think they they was feeling that answer. And David was looking at the top of her head, and I was too. Like right here, I don't know if like the dye didn't catch on right there. She had something going on, but it was just it distracted me as soon as she walked. I don't know if the sun was shining on that part of her head or what, but it was distracting me. So David says that. There was a situation with Liz, and you know, she told me that her and Jason kissed. And I was like, David, why are you so dramatic? And she called me right afterwards. She said that um, she felt bad about it, but she didn't want me to find out from anyone else. And she said, you know, David, my heart is still with you. Y'all, somebody said in the um in somebody's live, I was watching, and David has drunk eyes. <laughs> He does. Like, David look like he be lit. Like, he got a bottle of Mad Dog in his Bible case or something like that. I was weak. <laughs> My bad, David. You know, I'm done with you after this episode. I'm just letting you know we broke up, too. So, there's a situation with you and Alana, too. So, anyway, um, he David is broken by this little kiss. David, what you thought was going to happen on this, this show? I'm just, I'm, he, he gave me, like, um just oh he he just he he messed it up david i i didn't i didn't like this he was so over liz even just the way he looked his his um his face like his sunken shoulders and all that just his posture he like all the air was let out of him so anyway um david was like you know liz you know, I, I I just don't know. I just don't know. And it's like he was trying to put her on blast in front of his friends. Like she had did something like real bad. And he was like, Yeah, y'all know my past and and what I've been through. You know, my my heart. Um, you know, I, I just I just feel a way about this. And I'm trying to I'm trying to lead with um wisdom and 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 not follow my heart this time. <sighs> this nigga. I'm sorry, I, I could not do it with David. He said, I don't know enough about Liz. Really? Now you don't know enough about Liz? <laughs> Boy, <laughs> you're trying to find an excuse. to. You're trying to excuse your behavior by putting it off on her because you were insecure, petty Betty. You want to find somewhere to put it on her. David, I see right through you. All right, so um, Liz asked them, do they think that he's ready to love? Brittany says definitely that uh, she she thinks he is. I don't know if Micah answered or not. Micah was over there, uh, you know, eating his food. And Liz says, you know, I'm, I'm oh yeah, Brittany says, are you okay with him taking his time? Because that's what David said. I'm, I'm just going to take my time. And I felt like he was saying that to get under Liz's skin, like, you're going to have to work for me. Do, boy, do you see how fine and beautiful Liz is? And she's successful with no baggage that we know of. You better jump on now. You sitting up there playing around like this this woman, like you she don't have no options. David, <laughs> you gonna miss it. Anyway, David says that you know she she's with now she told them she was with him taking his time, but in her confessional, she says she needs more consistency with David. You know, um, it comes a point where a man needs to make a decision. And I agree, Liz. That that was just too much for me. David girl, let him go. Go find somebody else. I'll find you somebody. I'll hook you up. All right, so David is uh, talking to his friends after Liz left. He says, he talks about, again, taking his time. Um, he doesn't want to jump in a relationship. Brittany says that she likes Liz, that she seems to be like, she she seems to really like you. This, this, 
these friends were weird. I didn't like the way they responded. It, it was just like, like they, like, was this his coworkers or people that just don't really know him? Because it seemed like they didn't, like, you know, your friends would be like how Jason, how Jason's friends were. That, those were my favorite, that was my favorite group. Because they was like all animated, like, yeah, you know, whatever. And, and these two, like, mm-hmm, you know, <laughs> so, um, Mike is sitting over there eating his food. Try. He didn't got time. He ain't got time for Liz or David. So now we get to Jason. Again, Jason said after that meeting with his friends and he got the stamp of approval, he wants more Akira. He wants to have some intimate time with her. He feels like she deserves to have like something reserved for her. So he reserves this whole art gallery. There's like rose petals on the floor and all that. I told y'all, give me my flowers. I told y'all that Capricorn men will spend that money on you if they like you. If they don't like you, they probably, uh, uh, you know, get down with you, but they ain't going to spend no money. They cheap. So uh, he says that he is the type of dude, he said he will run you some bath water. He'll soak your body. He'll rub your body. He'll even clean your body. <laughs> I was like, you freaking weirdo. You going to clean the body? Like, okay. All right, Jason. So um, he's happy about, you know, this, this date that he set up. Did I say they had rose petals on the floor and all that? It was cute. So they start look at, looking at this painting and Kyra starts to break it down how it's complicated, just how love is. I was like, girl, all I see is a bunch of swirls of, of different colors. I don't know what you're looking at. But Jason said, you got that from that? <laughs> and he, they laugh. And she says they have that connection. You know, they can giggle and laugh at each other like two high school children. He points to this pain of uh, people in a, a sexual position. Of course, and Kyra was like, oh, okay. Like, yeah, you really would like that one. Um, Let's see. She said that she has uh, like this gut feeling with Jason that it, it feels good. And then they sit down. She asked him if he can see a future with her. He says, absolutely. And he's just like staring into her eyes. They lean into each other. She actually leans in towards him for a kiss and they kiss each other. And he said, I don't want to look anywhere else. He said, you got a good spirit about you. Like where you been all my life? And she was like, I've been around. <laughs> Y'all so corny. So, um, he said, you should have came my way a long time ago. Anyway, uh, Kyra says it's going great. You know, she she likes what's going on. He's a gentleman. It feels good, but she has feelings for AJ, so your girl is confused. All right, y'all. I'm going to ask y'all to like, comment, and subscribe at this point in the video. Thank y'all for sticking around, and I appreciate my subscribers, uh, all y'all. I appreciate all y'all for coming and checking me out. So now we get to deliberation time, and uh, Joelle said, I need a drink. <laughs> Joelle hurry up and pulled him one up. So Tommy comes in and he says, all right, now y'all tell me about these dates y'all had. Here come Joelle. He was like, oh man, Vernicia, um, you know, Shay said she might be clingy, man. My vibe is confused. And I was like, all right. He said, I don't know if she clingy or if she's territorial. I don't know which one it is. Tommy says, well, you know, y'all have a good connection. And I like Tommy giving this input because he he is good at that, at putting them on notice, like checking them. And he was like, you know, it's, it's always going to be bumps in, in the road in every relationship. So it's not going to be perfect. So don't count your girl out that quick. But um, he Joel is stuck on that. For some reason, he said that they had some situation that happened. And this was what I was, what I was talking about earlier, where I felt that they probably had an argument about that kiss and that's what led him to think that Vernicia is clingy. So then we get to uh, Jason. Jason talks about his um, meeting with his friends and Liz. He said Kyra asked questions um, and he started to get emotional. He was saying that he it, his encouragement is scarce where he comes from and it just touched him to hear two women say all these great things about him. And I, I, I was, you know, that that touched me because he, I don't know like what he's been through, but just to know that he appreciated them so much that he got emotional, it was touching. And also to see KJ and all the men support him, like they don't judge when when these men um, get emotional. But he said that, you know, he he thinks that it's, it's Kyra for him. You know, he likes Liz, but 
um, you know, is he picks Kyra over Liz. And look at Joel's face. And we're going to talk about why he got this, this face right here. We get to, oh, yeah. Jason says that they, they said that Liz was uh, stiff and closed off. And he defends it. He says, you know, when she's with me, she's not like that. I'm like, I don't get that from her. But for some reason, you know, his friends got it. So we get to Ron. Ron talks about Alexis and Chris, Chrysanthemum. Sorry, y'all. I hit the um, microphone. He says that Chrysanthemum is fun, but if he wants that Obama and Michelle experience, he got to pick Alexis. Why do everybody like compare their relationships to Obama and I said Obama. Y'all know who I'm talking about. Barack and Michelle. Y'all don't know what goes on in those people's lives. But anyway, she said he says that um he he doesn't know which one to pick. And Tom says, Well, you know, do you want something that's long term or you want to have fun? And Ron kind of sits, sits back and thinks about, about that. Now, for me, I think that Alexis is like a, a forward moving person, but I think that she may want to be more settled than Chrysanthemum does. And then I think that Chrysanthemum is about having fun. She she don't want to have children and all that stuff. She don't want to be tied down. So Ron has to find, like, if he can mush them together, that'll be good. But he has to find somebody who is a balance of the, the two. And I, I don't think either one is right for him. In my opinion, I know I was jeffing for uh, Ron and Alexis last week, but it's just, I kind of see that, that that's probably not going to be a good fit. Now, we know Nephew Tommy always has to hit us with a curveball. So he asked the men, if it were all to end right now, who would you go home with? AJ takes a drink, but of course he says Kyra. Joel is with all these dramatics talking about, ah, like he's struggling. I was like, is he having a Charlie horse or something was going on? And he says, Kyra. Jason was like, what? KG same reaction. He's like, man, what is going on? And his confessional, he said, what is you doing, baby? And KG, by the way, you nailed the accent and my sentiments exactly. What's really going on here? He said, man, come on now. You been with your girl, Renicia. She been riding with you and you're going to do her like this. KG is a, a really nice guy. He seems to be. And I, I was totally with him through this whole confessional. Like, what's going on? David even has this expression on his face. But David, I'm coming for you next with your drunk eye itself. So Tommy said, well, what is coming from? Because I've never even seen you and Vernie and uh, Kyra have a conversation or, you know, not even a connection. Like, where did this come from? And I was glad Tommy said that because I thought maybe I was missing something that, you know, some behind the scenes stuff was going on. But Joelle says, man, Vernisha, man, she just give me, man, control and I don't know what's going on, man. And uh, we had a little misunderstanding, but uh, I don't want to talk about it. And she just made me feel away, dog, you know. And he said that it was just off the top that he said Kyra. He didn't really mean it, but that's just, if he had to pick right now, he just picked Kyra because he mad at Bernicia. Spiteful. So, um, David, we get to David. Now, here we go. David said, oh, I, I got to pick one. Yes, your lane behind got to pick one. You only been dating one, and it, it, it's your you by your own your own doing. You've been dating one person, so let's let's not do this, David. And he said, "Well, we all going home with Kyra." <laughs> David, what you trying to prove? You are man. This made me just turn away from David. I, I'm like Joel now. Like just one thing made me turn all away from David. Like I'm, I'm tired of you. You changed on Liz that quick and gonna say Kyra because you mad because Liz kissed Jason when that's not even your woman yet. Jason said, Jason just looks floored. He like, man, I they know I've been connecting with this woman. What is going on here? We've been kissing, kissing. Like we really have a connection, and y'all like pushing up on my girl. And everybody's just like dumbfounded by this. Here go David in his confessional. Right, well, how much time does Kyra have on her hands to be making all, all these connections? What's going on? You worry about yourself and how much time Liz is going to give you to make a decision before she cut your little, little petty behind. Oh, I, I'm, so, I'm trying so hard not to curse. So we get to uh, Tommy asking the men who is uh, their, their weakest connection. 
And let's see, Ron says Liz. You know, that's that's understandable because they, they don't even <laughs> match at all. AJ says Liz as well. David, you know, him with these sermons. Can you just get to the point, sir? You know, Liz is a good vessel. You got some nice hands, though, David. I got to say, Liz is a good vessel. But she, you know, she, she told me about the kiss between y'all. He had to let Jason know. Yeah, I know you kissed my girl. Ain't nobody bothered by you, David. And Jason said, I'm just glad that's out there. And he said, you know, I'm, I, it's weighing on me, man. I'm just, I'm feeling some kind of way. Joel says Chrysanthemum is his weakest connection. Chrysanthemum straight up told him, man, you spend too much time with your children. And it, it got to be all about me. I, I don't have time for that. So it's a no for you because you and them kids, I can't do it. KJ says, yeah, KG, I'm sorry, says, yeah, because uh, Chrysanthemum, if it ain't about her, she don't want no parts of it, man. She just, she don't be trying to holler at nobody or nothing. She just selfish. And Jason agrees. He says that he tried to holler at Chrysanthemum before, and she just answered him whenever she felt like it. I guess she didn't answer at all. She took too long to answer. So, yeah, it's, it's a no for Chrysanthemum for him, too. Here go Ron. Ron says, well, yeah, well, she she answered for me, like, on the first ring. I don't know what's going on with y'all. Maybe she just don't don't want uh, KG. And I, I thought it was strange how he was coming just at KG because – Jason said something about her too. So why he came at KG this hard? Because in his confessional, he was like, you know, um, I think that KG just coming for Chrysanthemum because she ain't gonna give him no play. And he's a niche type of guy who needs a niche type of woman, which is correct. That shade, there was some truth in it, but you ain't have to say it like that, Ron. What's going on with you and, and KG? Anyway, um Tommy. Who does he talk to now? He says, yeah, one got to go. So David is, is saying, like, you know, I might have made, uh, played a part in Liz potentially potentially going home. You think so, David? So what you thought was going to happen? Because you already heard that Liz was in the bottom and you're going to add to it. And now you're feeling the way. Shut up. You deserve it. <laughs> so Liz, she's skeptical because these are the el elimination dates. She know what time it is. She meeting up with Ron. She know her and Ronnie ain't got nothing going on. So she come down with that fake smile. Ron is so nervous. He's laughing and uh, look like he damn near about to pass out trying to give Liz this information. Bless his heart because he was really trying to handle her with care. But he said, you know, Liz, the men said that you don't open up, that they don't know nothing about you, that you even come across as stiff. And she was like, what? You know, I, I bared my soul to these men. What are they talking about? I don't know what else they want from me. And then he eventually gets to it. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> you you are. You are ready to love. I wish I could have played the, the uh, clip of him laughing, that little nervous laugh he does, because it, it cracks me up every time. So Liz is like, OK, she she's going to take what they said and, and evaluate it. But she really feels like it. It wasn't truthful because she's giving her all to these men. She was like, look, I'm I'm doing what I got to do. I'm throwing it all out there. These men either got to uh, catch what I'm throwing or they going to miss it. And I said, go ahead, girl. Know your worth. Don't let them tell you down just because David, well, they know it's in time to tell her down, but don't let David tell you down just because he was trying to be petty. You have, to me, Liz has been open, just, you know, like she's been who she is and if they can't get with it, then they need to get on. I think Liz, after seeing David's behavior, I think that Liz is just not a fit for anyone on um, in this cast. So now Chrysanthemum with her stink self. I don't even want to talk about her because she was just so off-putting to me. I felt like slapping her little behind. But she came up there, mm -hmm, yeah, because she knew. She knew she was going home. So she hugs... Um, KG, like she didn't want to hug him. And he was being real nice and respectful, but he did pick up on that negative energy coming from her. And he was like, you smell good. What is that? And she said, mm -hmm, it's a secret. Girl, see see me? I would have been like, you know what, Chrysanthemum? That's why you're going home. You're not ready to love. Bye. I straight would have cut her straight like that. But she said she knew what it was. And she just was like, just come on, get to tell me what I got to improve on and let me go. So he says, you know, Chrysanthemum, I really like you. And she like, boy, whatever. And he was like, I do. I really like you. But you don't answer people back. You don't 
give the men no act right. And she was like, see, y'all, y'all can't take it when it's done to you. Chrysanthemum, which one of these men have been doing that to you? Because you making yourself out to be a lie. Because what if these men haven't done that to you, why are you taking what you your perception of men out on these men who are genuinely showing interest in you? You're stupid. So he he was like, like, what you talk about? So anyway, he tells her that she just she's she isn't ready for love. She she ain't cooperating or whatever. And she says, okay, she she was cool with it right then and there. And he was trying to give her some encouraging words. She wasn't hearing it. She kind of laughed it off like, how you going to tell me? Chrysanthemum just thinks she's above it all. And she just, she wasn't right for this this show. And I, I totally agree with her um, her being sent home. So anyway, she he tells her that, that she's it's time for her to go home. Chrysanthemum, he asked her for a hug, a real hug. And she was like, I don't, I don't want y'all energy. <laughs> How to push that ass down. <laughs> but anyway, when she gets outside, she was like, yeah, somebody, um, y'all, y'all worrying about me taking long to respond. That's a red flag for me. Y'all men, y'all men are insecure and, uh, y'all playing games or something. And it wasn't intentional, but that's just the lifestyle she's accustomed to. I don't have no words for Chrysanthemum, but bye. So she said she mad at ron and aj because one of them was being disloyal she's gonna find out who it was she gives me like a, a caricature like a cardi b type or something chrysanthemum you too old for that that behavior you need to grow up and realize that other people are watching this you're not only making an impression you you have made an impression on the people on this show but you've also made an impression on people who are watching this show so i hope it, it turns out well for you. I wish you well. Bye bye. All right, y'all. That's the end of the show. My top picks for uh, this episode were Ron and Kyra. Ron because he he did step up for Chrysanthemum even though she didn't deserve it. He didn't let his friends influence him, but he took their opinions into consideration. He handled Liz with care. Kyra because she was open and friendly. She asked questions and didn't just sit there when the the uh, friends were talking to her. Uh, she was she gave body and and face and all that stuff. She was, she was a total package, and we saw that just how she ended up in everybody's top picks, whether it was genuine or not. <laughs> so the bottom picks for me are Joel and David, of course. We ain't even got to go there anymore. For the women, bottom picks Chrysanthemum and Alexis. I hated how they were so catty towards each other, versus Liz and. Kyra, when they were on a date with the same man, but they handled each other well, they were cordial, they were talking, they even hugged each other goodbye. Chrysanthemum and Alexis are just two petty, catty women, and I don't see it for either one of them anymore. Predictions on who, prediction on who's going to go home next, I think David will be the one to go home next, and, and he deserves to go home. I'm not even sad for Liz if he goes home, because I think that Liz should should go home too and not in a bad way i just think that none of these men are right for her and they won't give her what she's looking for all right y'all that's the end of my review and i thank y'all for watching talk to y'all next week or maybe i'll have another video out. i don't know i'll talk to y'all later bye